you either live by the gun or you die by the sword. Welcome to the Good, the Bad, and the Weird Shorts. I'm Nico. And I'm Chris. And today, because theaters are still closed, we picked another Netflix original. We did. We picked an older one. Yeah. But it's one that, you know, we were both very excited for this when it came out. Yes, I personally was super excited. I was a little less just because the original content I wasn't originally super in love with. Yeah. But... I'm always excited for an anime adaptation movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we watched Death Note again. Yeah. Which, oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I when I when I first heard about it, I uh, I heard that uh, Adam Wingard was going to direct it. Mm-hmm. Which, and, high hopes. Yeah, I mean, I'd seen his segments in VHS, uh, ABC's of Death, uh, The Guest in Blair Witch. So he had somewhat of a horror background to him, which I'm like, okay, that could be pretty good. And then and William like, Defoe got cast as Ryuk, which, which I was very excited about. I was too. I was very excited to see that because honestly, I couldn't think of another actor who mm-hmm. I wanted to play that character. Um, and I don't know, I'm usually very just optimistic for adaptations in general, just because my bar was originally set with the uh, first Dragon Ball remake, uh. which if you haven't seen it, I don't know. It's a good laugh, (laughs) but it's terrible. It's true. It is like the most true piece of garbage on this planet. And so my bar was always been real low. Yeah. And and so as long as I can't see your wig line, (laughs) like I'm calling it a success. See, okay. However, yeah, I mean, there's a lot about this movie that even I as a non Death Note fan have some words about yeah and i on the other hand absolutely love death note yes. i have every manga yep um including the 13th volume yes um <laughs> that one yeah uh but yeah i mean for me the first I, I saw dragon ball evolution uh i think we were coming back from our a trip to the states that's a good yeah yeah back when tvs on the back of airplanes was kind of a newer thing honestly that scale of tv is about what that movie should be watched at yeah very small with headphones and like the plane shaking as you go is probably the old like that's gonna make it look the best yeah and i will say for the most part we have come quite a long way yeah even if even if you would like to disagree and say that a lot of the adaptations have been garbage they at least look better yeah. Like, people are putting effort into them, and that's a good step. Yeah. Um, I learned right before this, uh, my youngest brother called, and uh, he. I told him what we were doing. He likes this movie. There's a surprising amount of people who do like this movie. Yeah. Which, granted, there's a lot of fair points to like this movie about. Yeah. They, like, there are. Even if you're not a Death Note fan, even if you are a Death Note fan, I could see how... This would be a good movie for some people. Yeah. However, I like to think that this movie started off knowing very full well that it was going to be a movie at a target audience who was not super in love with the original context. I mean, people definitely sought it out because they loved the original, but it was it was put on Netflix. Yeah, well, I mean, it went through development hell. It did. Yeah. And... Which I think you can see more than I think they originally wanted to. There's a lot of pieces that feel missing when you watch this movie. Yeah, and I feel part of it uh, comes back down to uh, films having multiple writers. Yeah. And, I mean, it's not always a bad thing. No, sometimes it helps a lot with, you know, dialogue or comedic scenes. And sometimes it just makes things feel disjointed. Yeah, exactly. And um, while while I was researching this, because we got delayed recording this, so it gave me a little bit more time to do some reading on it. Um, Lake Heath Stanfield, the guy who plays L in the movie. Yeah, I um, liked him. He he has actually an interesting interview with The Verge. Mm. Um, And one of the things that plagued this movie from the get-go is... It was labeled for whitewashing. Yeah. Which, before we even talk anything about that, we are two pasty people. (laughs) Very pasty people who, you know, we are learning more. We are trying to, Mm -hmm. like, understand 
both sides of the argument and, you know, not just one more than the other. But at the same time, this is something that we do need to talk about. Yeah. And I, I like what he points out is that people misunderstand what an adaptation is. Which people, is fair. Yeah, which is ex- it's extremely fair because you, I feel whenever you make an adaptation, especially mm-hmm. of something so beloved, yeah. you toe the line between what people want in creating something new. Oh, yeah. Because... And, and you see this a lot with book adaptations mm-hmm. of things. People get upset that their favorite scene gets left out. Their yeah. character gets changed. It happens a lot, and it's really hard to find that line. And what we've seen more so with, I'd say, the anime and manga uh, adaptations. Those have been hit the worst with. Because you're trying to complete. A lot of times it feels like they're trying to com- make something completely, totally different. Especially, yes. like, with Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, and I think Death Note is a good example of mm-hmm. what they were trying to do and how it kind of yeah. it it worked to some extent. But also, I can see why people would be upset. Yeah, because um, and... Death Note, for those who don't know, hi Dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was originally a manga and anime series. It was set in Japan. All of the characters are, for the most part, meant to be Japanese and. Or at least living fully in Japan. It is not a westernized yeah, it, story. It's set in, I think, Kyoto. Yeah. Because I, I originally, before going into this, wanted to reread up to volume seven because that's, that's kind of the climax of where this movie ends, too. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I, I ended up not doing that. I read part of volume one when I got super busy with work the past week. But two, yeah. as I was thinking about it, I kind of wanted to re review it with fresh eyes again and mm. not. Mm hmm be heavily influenced by rereading and loving the series again. Yeah, and so, Um, but but at the same time, I I understand why the writers would think to themselves, okay, I don't know how much the audience will connect mm -hmm. with a high school student from a different country. Yeah, well, I mean... But at the same time, we've seen it work really well. We, We know that that barrier has been broken and it works just fine. Yeah, I mean... L's a black guy. And yeah, one thing there's... I like that he says about the adaptation is that uh, the idea that we should turn the whole cast into a Japanese cast just to fit a demo- just to fit the demographics or sorry, cast just doesn't fit the demographics of America. Yeah. Which is true. That, which is true. And so it, it is a complicated question yeah. and complicated answer that I, I don't have the correct answer to. Neither do but, I, because, I mean, uh, Stanfield also got pushed back because they cast Elle as a black guy and they touted that, or I don't know what to call the mass media or mm, public mm-hmm. opinion, said it was blackwashing, which is a term I've never heard before, which uh, turns out to be huh. the forced uh, diversification of a film. Oh, yeah. okay. That I guess that makes sense. But at the same time, I, I again, as from someone who this isn't a sensitive topic to, and I, I don't have that as part of my everyday conversation usually, mm-hmm. I mostly watched this movie, and, and again, like I've said, my uh, standard for adaptations is real, real low. Mm-hmm. So I don't really care who gets played yeah, exactly. most of the time. I think part of the th- problem that I have with it is... They they took part of the story, which was quintessentially the the background culture of Japan, and specifically the part of Japan that the story is written in. Which for this for Death Note, especially when you're reading it, it's not as ingrained as some animes is. Mm-hmm. However, there is always that background knowledge and information, and so the fact that they took those character names pretty much and just stuck them onto whole new characters. Yeah, really, exactly. That's where my problem was. I would have really liked to see a Death Note movie that's in the same universe as the original anime and manga, but doesn't have anything to do with the original cast. Yeah. Maybe we bring the... I guess they're kind of demons in the movie. They're, Shingam- they're Shinigam- Shinigami. Shinigami. Yeah, they're Shinigami in the book and the manga. The movie kind of makes them more into demons, just... They call them Shinigami. They they still feel very different than the ones from the book, I think. Yeah, and I mean, that that's that's one thing that, you know, I understand. Like, we've talked before, mediums don't transfer no. quite the same. Especially with Death Note, which Death Note is a very text-heavy anime. Mm-hmm. And it's a very dialogue-heavy manga. So, 
it really would be, like, if it was a word-for-word -word translation, it would be boring as hell. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, when we talked about Children of the Corn, when Stephen yes. King wrote it, the script, they said that it could never be made into a movie because it was too internalized. Yeah, and so, whereas Children of the Corn took it in a whole new direction, I would really like to see that with a lot more of these anime yeah. uh, adaptations. Because or... I think it's the world that the people are really in love with, especially for this one. Well, and that's one thing another, or sorry, that's another thing that Stanfield mentioned as well, is that you take the original source material and it's the backbone, the, mm -hmm. the source material is the backbone and it's what you do with it. Unfortunately, I feel that a lot of adaptations we've seen are either too broad in their covering where they're trying mm -hmm. to be too, mm -hmm. they're trying to cover everything. Like I rewatched The Last Airbender. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. Well, I, I was just curious, because I hadn't seen it since I saw it in theaters. And oh, you, you paid money to go see it. Again, I, I am sorry. I, not only that, I saw it in 3D, because my friend said, oh, it's going to be so good in 3D. I could see why they would say that. The it was not. The concept of it would be good in 3D. It is it's... the last 3D movie I saw, too. Fair. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm wrong. I actually saw the last Star Wars movie in 3D, because... I did not pay for that ticket. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah you you get to go to things <laughs> with work. <laughs> um, but so I, well, what what I the thing I had issues with Avatar. Not talking about Death Note, but Avatar was trying to cover an entire series and cram as much as they could into an hour forty five minutes. Death Note for me was a rather or more so was a rejection of the source material yeah where okay while i was re-watching it how they originally set up the movie is they were like okay here's some edgy high schoolers mm -hmm. the cheerleader who smokes I the nerdy guy <laughs> yeah the uh awkward smart guy who is writing all the test or answering doing homework for people for money yep. with a little bit of touch of supernatural and so for me they took the source material and changed it from a fundamental story of pursuit or evil disguised with good intentions yeah. against true good mm -hmm. and made it into an edgy teen drama like Twilight. Yes, I would agree with that statement, which I was never much of a Death Note fan. Yeah. Most, mostly just because, I, at, especially when it was really popular... I wasn't really into kind of the dark shows and books. Yeah. I, I, at the time, really liked cooking uh, books. Yeah. And I liked cutesy ones, and I liked the ones about the kids who meet in music class and fall in love. And ever, But since then, yeah. I, I have enjoyed this genre, and Death Note does stand out for its story. Mm -hmm. It And it's, like you said, it's battle between good and evil and what you perceive as good and evil. Yeah. Um, and part of... Part of that was very... The cast list is pretty short in both versions. And part of the reason the manga and the uh, anime worked was the characters played very specific and strategic roles. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a whole lot of points in the story that were like fluff and filler and like, oh, well, anyone could have said that. And I mean, the other thing too is the original one felt more like a battle of the wits. It this, was very much a chess game. Yeah, this felt more like Elle knew exactly who it was pretty on. They went through uh, volumes real quickly. But the uh, my other thing, too, is we also aren't really introduced to Elle until a third of the way into the movie. And I would argue that a lot of these characters, while they are introduced in a very loose sense, mm -hmm. they the movie doesn't give us a whole lot to actually get to know them. You just no. kind of have to rely on a stereotype to understand their motives and who they are. And yeah. that was kind of disappointing for me because they took a lot of character traits and abilities as far as like mental deduction, cleverness, you know, cunningness. Yeah. Well, and they, they removed them from some people and added them to others, which I don't normally have an issue with. No. But you need to tell me why the cheerleader is now suddenly the mastermind manipulator, whereas in the book and the original, she wasn't. Yeah. I mean, in the original, she's smart enough. Yeah. She's definitely, you know... Among the brightest, but the mastermind role, that overarching puppeteer role, wasn't her. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, they kind of... Shoehorned her into they, it. They did. They shoehorned her into it, which 
if that's the way we want to go, that's fine. But tell me why. Tell me why this is yeah. her personality trait. Why does she suddenly want to murder people? Yeah. No, it's... I don't know. They, they did a lot... To be honest, they did... They made some changes with characters that, like, okay, fine, whatever. Like, Watari having oh. his mantra of rest is good for a strong mind. Like, okay, yeah, whatever. Sure. Why not? But the thing is... The movie, for me, started to break down a lot of the fundamental rules that made Death Note so good. Yeah. Especially it, with... We're, I'm going to spoil this a little bit just because I mean, it's, it's... It's an older show and movie. Yeah. Eh, sorry. Um, Light kills Watari with only knowing his first name. Well, okay. And, that, yeah. and even then, that's not his real name either, as yeah. we know. Yeah. It's, it's well established. The rules of the Death Note... Well, hi, Kitty. Um, are well established and heavily followed mm -hmm. in the book and the manga, which makes it problematic when they break them in this new movie. Yeah. Because we've spent so much time putting emphasis on these rules and making them feel so solid and permanent. And then not only do we break that rule, but I think later on, don't they also break the rule that you can't kill a Shinigami? Just because they are the original owners. They are um, they are a god above. And in the movie, they change it to, oh, you just don't know how to spell my name. No, I don't think they ever try to kill a Shinigami, um, if I remember right, in the manga. It, that's nothing that... The only time a Shinigami will die is if they purposely write a human's name in the Death Note, knowing it will prolong another human's life. Yeah. And so, like, at one point, uh, one falls in love with a human... And wants to protect them and light traps them. Yes. And they're for he's for it's again, it's a game of chess where light is constantly being forced into corners and then working his way out of them. This one is just straight off straight off the bat. There's no comp yeah. there's no competition. There's no competition. And the other thing that this movie I don't know, I, I feel like if this had changed, I think mm -hmm. I think it would have been it still wouldn't have been, like, the best movie ever, but it would have been better received, is we're given the trope of this one character is so smart that they've orchestrated everything all the way from the beginning sort of concept, which yeah. to me always feels like a lazy man's way out, especially for a movie that spent a lot of time showing that this is supposed to be something of a chess mm -hmm. game. This is supposed to be a back-and-forth battle of the wits, well, if one character is so smart that they're pretending to be dumb the whole time, you need to prove to me that this character is like this. Yeah, and for me, the whole time, Light is just a whiny, wannabe, a very whiny wannabe edgy teenager. Yes, and don't get me wrong. If you want to have edgy teenagers be in your Death Note movie, I mm -hmm. don't think you'd be wrong in putting that in there. But you need to prove to me that these teenagers are worthy of holding a death note really and the movie never really does that yeah it, it just kind of defeats the entire original concept which is kind of why i would have really liked to have seen the concept of the death note but forget light forget l go somewhere completely we can be in seattle now but those characters no longer are a problem they are yeah. they have their own story their own timeline this is a different one and i feel like that would have that, that that probably would have been better, I think, because yeah. for me, when I personally when I go see an adaptation of either a book or a series, either like Harry Potter, it has to be a true adaptation of it. And even then, there's a lot left out that exactly. people got upset about. But I mean, you can only it, cram so a... much into a movie; otherwise, you get Avatar level of cramming. And even then, it's it's one of those balancing acts where you have to decide how much is too much. Yeah, and so for me, when I go, is either I want something new, or I want them to take the source material and expand upon it or mm. enhance it in some way. Yes. Like, for me, uh, personally, I think one of the first movies we saw together was uh, Ghost in the Shell. Yes, I think um, so. For me, I know that one was highly problematic with Scarlett Johansson being cast, but for me, I, and for anyone who didn't see it because of that, they missed the entire point of the movie. Yeah. Um, because Ghost in the Shell still kept its uh, existential thought line of what yeah. was she a real person or not? Yeah. But it, it expanded still, uh, upon it and made it more, honestly, more terrifying of 
what what was a possibility in that society. And Mm -hmm. for me, that's what made it. It wasn't as good as the original as the original Ghost in the Shell, but again, sure. I'm not going into that to watch Ghost in the Shell. If I want to see that, I'll just watch the original. Yeah, exactly. And for those who make the argument of, well, it needs to be really close because this is going to be people's into anime or manga. Let's be realistic with ourselves. If if the live adaptation is how you're introducing someone, maybe. Don't. Yeah. Maybe pick a pick a genre that they actually like and yeah. and try and pick some of the most popular ones from that genre and give them a couple of samples. Make it clear that there's lots of options. Exactly. Like with horror, I know not to deep dive into it mm-hmm. right away with people. Um But even even horror inside the anime world is super varied. I know you like the ones with some really crazy imagery. There's a mm-hmm. lot of acid trippy looking yes. horror whereas i like the ones that are more classic ghost stories yeah like xxx holic i love that one uh i also really like this really old one i think it's called ghost hunter uh and it's a piece of trash but i like it's it's set up like a ghost story each yeah. episode is a ghost story yeah and like uh or to my end of things i like mushishi exactly which is a weird, quirky little one. And so, like, I wouldn't start off someone who'd never watched an anime or manga, mm-hmm. knowing that they like horror, I would probably lay out a bunch of different ones. Yeah, one I've actually heard that I haven't seen yet, um, that was supposed to actually be really good, Edge of Tomorrow. I haven't I haven't gotten to it yet. I've heard it's actually pretty good. Um, but, I mean, other tangentially related movies, like uh, Pacific Rim, for yeah, example. sure. Like, I... I've talked, I think I saw it with my brothers, but again, I think maybe my dad would enjoy it, but I know my mom wouldn't. Yeah. So I'd introduce her to something a little bit different. And the other thing that I think a lot of people have frustrations with, with the anime adaptation movies, Mm -hmm. is a lot of them are currently picking big ones that at this point, have become something of classics. They are something that people remember from growing up, either when they were high schoolers or middle school age kids. Yeah. A lot of these big name ones, like Death Note, like Full Metal Alchemist. Naruto, Bleach. You know, even Dragon Ball Z, all of those have have reached for anime status classic Mm -hmm. sort of mindset. Those set some type of boundary or made some type of marker. Classics of, I think it was in the second wave. Exactly. When we were introduced to it. And so a lot of people go in with a love of that thing, which Mm -hmm. is fair. But the rest of movie genres where we've taken something and and done an adaptation, like books, like board games, like video games, those have had time to flush out and figure out what works. And it makes it easier for you as an audience member to see the poster or the trailer and know, oh, this is going to be okay, this is going to be good, or this is going to be just garbage. Looking at you, Sonic. (sighs) Yeah. Because we looked at it and all of us went, No, that's not what Sonic looks like. And luckily with Sonic, they went, oh, you're right, that's not Sonic. Our bad. And they fixed it, and I would argue now it's much better. Yeah. Uh, But anime hasn't had that ability yet. Well, I will argue in the Western. In Western. In Western markets, we haven't had that. Because Death Note does have those live adaptations from Japan. Yes. Which... I've seen the first one. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. Again, yeah. they took the core storyline and made little tweaks to it to make it work better as a live action film. Yeah. One, the CGI is not the best. We it's... saw that with Full Metal Alchemist as well. Yeah. And Bleach a little bit. But yeah. at the same time, we have different standards for those kind of movies. When something like that is brought over here in America, we're expecting something super high end. Whereas I yeah. feel over there it's more entertainment. It, and it's, an, it's a continuation of Death Note and just, we love it, we want more. Mm-hmm. Whereas here it's like, I love it, I need a perfect version of it. Yeah. And I think the, also a problem that has kind of made kind of a swirling whirlpool for the anime adaptation world is we most of the ones that we love and are getting live action remakes have had a live action remake done Mostly in Japan yeah. already. And sometimes multiple, sometimes even musicals. Because, you know, everyone loves Death Note the Musical. <laughs> oh, God, I have no desire <laughs> to see that. Um, It's a good laugh. I wouldn't say it's good, <laughs> though. But 
when when those adaptations do make it to us, it's yeah. never in big screen format. You're usually lucky to find it off of a website or maybe a friend got it when they went abroad. Yeah. You're it's it's kind of an under the table dealing of, hey, I heard you like this thing. Yeah. I, I got you, fam. <laughs> sort of thing. Whereas with other genres in America, we don't have that problem. Yeah. And so we don't have, like, a baseline to say, oh, yeah, this other person played L really well. Could we get them? Or, hey, this writer already did one. Can we get them involved? Yeah, our baseline is Dragon Ball Evolution. Which didn't go well. No. Um, but I kind of want to talk about the movie a little bit more. We have bitched about the yeah, live-action adaptation genre I would, a lot. I would say that I actually liked the first half of this movie. I honestly, there was parts of the movie I did quite enjoy as well. Um, for starters, I did actually like uh, the Death Note itself. I did I too. I thought it was a nice change from the original because the mm -hmm. original, for those who don't know, is it looks like a regular composition notebook. I was like, this one they made it look used. They made it look used, and they also made it look magical. Yeah. Whereas the original one legit looks like those black and white ones with the square in the middle that says put your name here, mm -hmm. subject and all that. So like in a written and drawn sense, cool, all right, dope. In a movie sense, I would lose it in my backpack. Oh yeah. Um and I, so I also really liked at the beginning um a lot of the characters initial portrayals of themselves. Yeah, it was really fast, but at be at the beginning I liked it. It was towards the end that they started to lose me. See, I didn't like them from the get-go. Fair. Again, for me, it had a very Twilighty feel to it. It, yeah. Um, edgy teenager bullshit. Um, but I, I did not like the acting for L or no, sorry, not L. L did a great job. Yeah. Uh, Light and Mia. I would agree. They are by far the weakest out of the cast. And that's that's a big issue is because they're the main they protagonists. Are, and they're on screen almost the whole time. Yeah. Which I agree. Yeah. They're acting. It wasn't. I don't think it was bad acting. I think they were given a bad character to play. Yeah. Well. And I don't think there's. The acting wasn't good either. No. It. I would argue it wasn't as... Um, it wasn't Tommy Wiseau level of acting. <laughs> no. But it wasn't good. No, and what kind of hurt it was... Um, Elle's portrayal was... Especially at the beginning of the movie. It, I think, lost it at the end. But the beginning, especially if you even kind of liked the anime or manga, Elle's portrayal was pretty good. It was good. The thing I will say, I know there why... There was at least effort put into it. <laughs> I will say, when I first saw this, I wasn't a huge fan of Elle's portrayal, especially towards the end. But when I rewatched it, this Elle is a different yes. kind of Elle than the original. Yes. He is a very hands-on, very yes. Americanized detective. Which I, when I first watched it, I didn't mind. Mm -hmm. And I liked the effort they went to making Elle the... Because in, in the book and the show, he is very weird. <laughs> Yeah. And and that's part of his character trait is that he is kind of the odd man out, but that's okay cuz he's super smart. Yeah. He's this amazing detective. And in this one, while there were parts of his character that I wasn't super crazy about, mm -hmm. I like that they bothered to give him the silly walk at times. Like he didn't know how to hold himself in certain situations. Yeah. He didn't understand how to sit in a chair sometimes. Mhm. Mm cuz well, he knows, not that how to, he knows how to sit in a chair. He, he sits chooses. in a specific way, yeah. He chooses to do these things because and that's who he is. It, and that's... I liked that effort at the beginning. Even Light's dad, James, which, yes. honestly, of all the characters, if you're going to change their names, everyone besides Light and L were changed. Yes. Which... And Ryuk and Watari. And L I get, because L yeah. is just a letter. I never... Like, I get it, he's the main character, but I didn't like that they left Light's name Light and they changed his last name to Turner. Yeah. Because Light isn't a name here. You know yeah. one's called Light unless you have really hippie parents. Yeah. Or you name yourself Light. So, like, Most why... Most of our hippie names are, like, after cities or... Flowers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> trees, nature, not Light itself, because it doesn't have the same depth and emotion as it yeah. does in... This is another one of those things where, like, yeah, we moved it, but we kept it. Why couldn't we change him to Lucas? <laughs> yeah, well, I think because it would lose its iconicness to it. It would. Which, and 
Fair, <laughs> but like, I don't know, maybe change his name to something else that's hippie bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it would have, for an American audience who'd never seen the show before, changing it to a different hippie name I don't think would have lost anything. Yeah, and that's maybe one thing. If you're going to Americanize it, go all in. Go Yeah, go full on. Because, I mean... We... But don't go Dragon Ball level of full on. Just well, because... part of that was because the names they bothered to change in that one weren't... They weren't excessively, yeah. like, non-American eyes. They all kept their same names. Yeah. Like... Um, but, yeah, like, uh, a lot of people don't know this. The Departed. It's a remake yeah. of a Chinese film. Yeah. The Grudge. The Grudge brought in uh, an American person for the American point of view set in Japan. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's ways to do it, like uh, The Ring. Yeah, The Ring did a wonderful job of it. But while we're on the cast, um, while... L was a really good portrayal. We should mention real quick the true star of this show, which was William Defoe. Which I wish there was more of, but thinking back on it, Ryuk's not such a big part in it. He's more commentary and explaining yeah, of which stuff. Yeah, it's fine. And honestly, because they wanted this to... They, they were trying to make this a kind of horror movie. Well, I don't think it managed to actually be one. No. I think it spent too much time on romance as opposed to, like, okay. setting up themselves. So that leads into a couple things that I have big issues with the movie. Sure. Um, one is that the horror aspect of it, the very Final Destination-y deaths. Yeah. I, I don't mind them I, sometimes. They're but they They're fun. They, they kept escalating to a point of well, non-realism, and that was where I lost it. Not even that. You know, it's it's a magical death note that will kill someone. Sure, but... My, my issue was, is it felt out of place. Yes. The simplicity of the heart attack is what made the original death note yes. so good. And then when he had to revert to cases without using a heart attack. That's when we started to see the chess game begin. Exactly. Yeah. No, I I agree. I I don't mind a final fantasy death sort of thing. However, final destination. Oh, final destination. I mean, final <laughs> fantasy also has some pretty brutal deaths. No, There's not a lot really. There's so, a lot of more sword deaths though. Uh, uh not for the main characters, just everything around them. Unless you're Aerith. Unless you're Aerith. Oh. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no, more final well, destination I don't use. I don't mind. I kind of enjoy seeing a creative death. However, we need to, again, set rules for ourselves. Yeah. And that's what the manga and anime did, was they established, like, oh, he just wrote this person's name. This is how they died. It went from being a hard magic to being... It was soft magic at this point. I Let's mean, be... the original Death Note is still soft magic because there's freedom at the end. Yeah. But there's... I don't know, it just lost that little bit of symbology behind Kira. Yeah, it it really did, and that's the other thing I have a problem with, is Kira. Yeah. In the, in the original, there was more weight and importance to the name. And the weight and importance the movie tried to give the name Kira felt like bullshit yeah that that was another thing is when the me when the movie goes right into like the media speculation is that it took time and you know i understand you have a limited time in an hour and 40 some minute movie oh, sure. but they jumped right into everyone believe knowing it was one specific person and conspiracy theories but uh to backtrack a little bit another one of my issues with death note well as you mentioned they focused so much on the romance for me, at one mm. point, I actually felt a little uncomfortable because they ended up making the death note and the killing kind of sexualized. Yeah. Where they're making out and stripping each other while they're going over, like, who are we going to kill next? And it's, it's like, that, it that's does... not death note. No. It... There, there are movies that do that, and there are yeah. a couple of 80s classics that do it phenomenally, if that's what you want. But that wasn't and never is yeah. the point of death note. And I think that goes back to my original point with this movie is that it was they very loose like they there was a neglect for the source material yeah and i and honestly that i think that's where it lost a lot of its audience yeah i would agree and not even the audience that was originally in love with it you can tell as a person who doesn't know anything else about death note you can see where once we start breaking our own rules. Mm-hmm. It feels cheap. It feels lazy. It, oh, yeah. It, 
it it adds more questions to people who don't have background knowledge to try and even pretend to fill in those especially answers. the ending especially oh i hate the ending of this movie yeah which um unfortunately there is already plans for a sequel uh yes there is which i am hopeful that the sequel does what i've always wanted and mm-hmm. forgets this cast of characters completely and yeah. moves on to an entire new story and group of people to put a Death Note in. Yeah, follow what they did in Volume 13 of Death Note. Just do their own little one-off. Yeah, Com- go completely off the rogues because, f- at least for Death Note. Yeah. And this isn't a cross-the-board recommendation for all anime. Because there are animes where it is about the character and their growth and their development. Death Note is about the world and the specific anime Uh yes it's about the characters in that world however that world could be put onto other people yeah um the other thing that uh unfortunately i found out more recently Uh adam wingard the guy who directed this yes he is the director of king kong versus godzilla which i'm I'm being optimistic because it could be good the thing I am a little bit worried about also is I found out he is going to direct the American adaptation of a South Korean film called I Saw the Devil, uh, which is one of my favorite South Korean films, and we'll see how his adaptation goes. Yeah, and, you know, if if he truly puts his heart into trying to make adaptations into a polished and, like, true movie mm-hmm. thing... Then I'm all for it, because I get it. There's going to be some that are bad. Yeah, You have to learn how to do it. Like a uh, classic example, The Shining. Yes, perfect Stanley, example. Stanley Kubrick's version is its own thing. Yes. It is, it is a beautiful... Adap- it's, it's a beautiful adaptation. Mm-hmm. And even then, Dr. Sleep pulls more from the book itself, but it still has to tie back to the movie, mm-hmm. because even though Stephen King hated the original movie... The original movie is so iconic for what mm-hmm. The Shining is. And I think I think if we take live action adaptations of anime and manga that we can have something like that where yeah. we where it's an appreciation kind of like what we see in uh the Japanese live action adaptations. Mm-hmm. So I I agree. And so if if Death Note had to be the sacrificial lamb for this guy to, you know, start on the path to good adaptations then honestly i'm not super upset there's no. room for there's obviously room with death note for a redo exactly like we said there are aspects of it that were nice changes and yeah. nice differences from the original that and, we appreciated and unlike with some uh adaptations even though even some from japan itself a lot actually from mm. japan itself this one did not hurt my eyeballs when i looked at it so no. that's good. Yeah, Ryuk was awesome. Yeah, Ryuk looked the, amazing. There are some effects because one well, the movie has aged, and we've seen even better and better special effects in the past three years. Yeah, and honestly, um, you know, because they chose to go with a dark setting for a lot of Ryuk's scenes, I don't think he aged that bad. No, like yeah, and he it's will, only three years, but still, like you can you can see where some movies have leaned so hard into the. Um, into the style that you're like, ah, eh, in ten years this is gonna, this is gonna be a little dated. Yeah, little uh, <laughs> teaser. I have noticed that on one of our up on our upcoming um, All Star episodes, uh, some effects have not aged as gracefully as we had liked. They're not bad, <laughs> but they haven't aged as well. They are not bad because we want them to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, if. If Death Note has to be the one that gets run over first by the bus that is learning how to do this style of mm-hmm. movie, then I'm okay with that. Because yeah. unlike some movies where like, oh, well, we've already done that once, I don't want to see it again. I think Death Note has the ability, because it is a nice, short, compact story, mm-hmm. it has the ability to be resurrected farther down the road if we want it. Yeah, it keeps some of the core that's still there, mm-hmm. but it rejects enough of it where it's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Avatar tried staying too close to it and it compressed. also missed. Yeah, it compressed. Just... It mi- completely missed the mark. It tried compressing 24 episodes, everything from 24 episodes, into one. And uh, episodes that are incredibly dense. Exactly. Uh, which, yeah. So, like, like normally, 
like with Avatar, if someone in 10 years says, hey, I'm making a new Avatar, I promise it will be good. Most people are going to mm. so heavily remember Avatar, the first one, they'll probably say, nah, thanks. Well, we're, but, we're, in case you haven't seen oh, it, you, yeah, uh, we're having the same things with the uh, Netflix live action adaptation as well. Yeah, which, you know, it's one of those things where if it was bad, but it had enough good in it mm-hmm. for, I think, people forgive. It might take a while. You might need to wait to make your movie. But I think eventually people will forgive Death Note. Not say it's good, but at least move on if a new one came around. Yeah. Or just even acknowledge that it's a step. Yeah. It was a stepping stone, hopefully, in the path to good adaptation films. Yeah. We're We're just not there yet. One uh, of these days. I mean, the best one we've had is Battle Angel Alita, which, which me not knowing the source material, I still know they skipped over huge chunks. They they really did. And, you know, there's a lot of argument to that one, which we might have to talk about that yeah. one someday. We, we are getting there. We are getting slowly to mm-hmm. a point where it's not just writers realizing that there are good story plots yeah. in anime. We have to have a Howard the Duck before we can get to Iron Man. We we have to have an hour Howard the Duck. And I think we are currently living in the the golden age of Howard the Ducks. Yeah. But you know what? Eventually we will get to the glorious, most recent Iron Man. Yeah. So, Chris, at the end of it, after talking about everything bad and stuff we liked with it, do you, do you recommend giving this movie a watch? If the concept of Death Note m- intrigues you at all, I would watch the original source for this one. If you love the original Death Note, I would spend your time trying to hunt down those Japanese adaptations. Some are actually pretty good. I wouldn't say they're like gold and you know that is going to like change your life, but they're they're pretty good. They, Some of them are not. <laughs> they take the source material more seriously than this one. I they would take say. yes, they do, and but this movie itself, I wouldn't say watch it. No, I I honestly still can't recommend it. Um, I mean, if you can, if you if you're interested, honestly, watch the original anime. Yeah, then... and it also reads wonderfully if you're not a watcher. Exactly. This is one of the few ones that I truly think it reads better than it watched. Oh yeah, and uh, the artist for the original manga, Takashi Obata, mm-hmm. he was one of my inspirations for drawing it as a high middle school or high schooler. So yeah, for for me, and I I'm trying to yeah, and I mean I'm not saying it from. Uh, I'm so invested in the source material. I it's I, I just still, not a good movie. No, it's not exactly. The, it's, it's the acting for the most part is lackluster. Some of the camera is, camera work and uh, directing is great. Some of it. When and elves then, introduce the nightclub shots, really cool. Yeah, the and, whole uh, asylum is cool. And then there are shots that feel a little bit. Bad. A lot of Dutch angles. You spend a lot of time with a head tilt, but Dutch angle. Uh, yeah. So, like, this movie has potential. If you want to study it for the understanding of what will come, maybe then watch it. But otherwise, uh, go watch the original. Yeah, I, I, again, like we said, I think it's going to be one where we'll have to reevaluate it in, in terms of what's to come in live yeah. action. So I agree. So, anywho, this has been The Good, The Bad, and The Weird Shorts. Thanks for listening. Peace.